Hello everybody. As we all know, the G5 back there is my main driver for serious tasks, so I could not have it offline to do the PCI Express SSD experiment. So I decided that, well, since I'm building a new NAS, I will use one of the hard drives as system drive for the G5, boot it via FireWire, and uh, in the meantime do the experiments. That has worked so well that I decided to install Linux to the cheapest SSD I could find. So whenever I need to use it, I just put it into that toaster thing and boot it up. Given um, I rarely use Linux, I'm gonna keep the two SSDs as boot drives for macOS, and whenever I need, I just boot from the SSD externally via FireWire. And then I can dedicate all my internal SSD storage for Linux, for macOS, and when I need to store things for Linux, I can just use my NAS, as I'm not gonna really use Linux for anything performance demanding in terms of storage. All right, now I have to come to some decisions here. I have only 60 some gigs uh, in RAID 0 for the internal SSDs, and that's how I was always booting. But since I use the hard drive for backups, I got to the point where it is really full of stuff. And I don't really have that enough, st that much storage here. So let's go through the folders and see what I can get rid of. Because here, well, my Aperture library. So I'm going to save it some external drive. Um, this is the backup of my NAS before the upgrade, I suppose. Yeah, uh, I still need to keep this around for a while more. But most things have been migrated. So I guess I will also move it to the other hard drive. My logic files, well, it's the CD I'm working on with one of my bands. They will need to stay here. Actually, they will go into the SSDs once the migration is done. So for now, I'm also going to put it move it to the external hard drive. And I should go back to less than 60 gigs and be able to just migrate everything back into the SSDs and make it bootable and not need the FireWire boot anymore for the G5. Then I can start working on, this, on the PCI Express SSDs and make them ready for the final setup. So I found out a hard drive that I can use. It contains the backups before I migrated uh, my servers and etc. from Visual Machines to a mix of uh, FreeBSD, JLs, the other project that's going on here. But system has been stable and I already have some tape backups running on, as you can hear in the background. So I'm gonna use that as my storage. Unfortunately, it is formatted in NTFS. So I guess I need to bring up disk utility and clear that up. Well, it surely takes this time. Okay, so let's come here. Partition, Microsoft reserved. <laughs> Why can't I? Remove the partition. Okay, well, whatever. Let's try this again. Let's do a erase. And let's do it. Mac OS journal. I don't need security options. That would be just for, you know, adding random bits to the hard drive so the data is unrecoverable. But I don't need that right now. Let's call it mm, backup pre SSD and erase what why I'm formatting the disk I really hate this new disk utility it's retarded How do I get rid of the partition? 
Okay, let's try this. So backup pre SSD. Partition map doesn't really matter. Actually, let's do Apple partition map. So in case you need to use on the G5, I can. So let's see if now it works. I'm always afraid I'm gonna format the wrong drive and I'm doing this kind of thing. Usually I would have uh, ejected the rest. I'm being a bit reckless now. You can do this. All right, seems to be good. Get rid of this utility now. Open a new finder window. Copy there the backup, my logic library, and the backups. So after this is all done, I'm gonna do some CRC checks on everything to be sure the data was copied over correctly because I had already tried to copy my aperture library to the NAS and uh, data got corrupted. I had a lot of images with, uh, you know, soft bits and corrupted and it was super slow to access. So here I'm gonna be sure that everything's copied correctly before I delete everything. This is for sure going to be huge, so I'm not going to be able to continue today. Um, so, well, it's going to be the same video, but we'll speak tomorrow or the day after. All right, now that the system is up, let's see how long does it take to load, to load some programs. I'm not gonna do really scientific benchmarking here because it doesn't make sense to try a system that's putting up via FireWire 400. But just for the sake of curiosity, we can open here Terminal, Activity Monitor, for Box, Preview, System Preferences, VLC, Core Player, Logic, my final cuts crash, so let's skip it. Motion. Let's see how it goes. I predict the biggest difference is gonna be loading logic. Let's see. All right, we seem to be good. So we need to switch it off and now go to the FireWire mode to image uh, the installation uh, into the internal hard drives. So let's turn it off. Now I have a problem. The only long FireWire cable that I have is the FireWire 400 cable, but my Mac mini doesn't have a FireWire 400 port, as you can see there. So let's see what I figure out. So in the end, the best solution for me is to really remove the PCIe cards. The G5 doesn't boot into the, the installer with the, with the cards connected. The, the installer just uh, has a kernel panic. And I don't have a cable long enough to boot the G5 in FireWire 
mode directly to the mini to do the imaging using this utility. So I'm gonna have to remove the cards, connect the hard drive directly to the G5 using the toaster thing, and then boot the installer and do the imaging. So let's see how it goes. Apple's user-friendly solution to eject a CD if you don't have an operating system available, since there's no hardware button, is to go to the open firmware, type eject CD. So now the drive tray opens and I can get my Leopard CD and wait a bit, otherwise it fails, and then type Mac boot and things should boot up properly. Oh, come on, what's the problem? Let's give it some time, this should spin up and hopefully it's gonna find uh, the installation. Oh, there you go, it's booting, excellent. The capture process adds some latency to the mouse, so it's gonna be a bit erratic here, the movement. All right, here we are. I should be able now to partition the disk and then to the data transfer. Well, actually, I'm gonna give it a fresh shot, have a new system, and then restore everything over. So let's go to utilities, go down to disk utility, and then there we can just add the two SSDs to a new RAID volume and format it uh, with the macOS standard. So now we're going to choose one of the disks, then go to RAID, if I can click of course, enter a name for the set, I'm going to call it boot RAID, and it's going to be a striped RAID set and that's uh, equivalent to RAID 0. Then you just drag into the white box the two uh, disks that are, are going to be part of your RAID, choose a block size, Depending on the file you're handling, you choose different block size. Video would use uh, bigger files and databases maybe small block sizes. So um, I'm confused here, I'm just gonna use the operating system standard. And then we just do create. The process take a, takes a little while. And once it's done, the system is gonna mount the new RAID set as a single partition and you can proceed with the installation. Another decision that's important to, to make here is choose what to install. The standard uh, installation is to be user-friendly plug and play, so it includes all drivers, fonts, languages, and etc. But I know the languages I need, and I know I don't need any printer drivers, so I'm gonna deselect them here. With the installation done, all that is left is to reboot and install the updates. So let's go. All right, here is a fresh installation of MyCast Leopard. The first thing to do is to eject the CD, otherwise it's gonna be making a lot of noise every time the computer restarts and also it slows down the boot process because the system goes through every single attached device to see if it's bootable or not and which one is marked blessed for boot. All right, the CD is out now and let's do the updates. So first thing to do is to go to the Apple menu on the top left as you all know at this point, if you're interested in this, go to software update and let's see what is there for us. 
I have not installed, so all there should be should be the combined OS updates and maybe iTunes, so let's see. Bingo, I was right. I've done this too many times. Um, well, I'm not sure whether I should do iTunes now or not. It may spare me a boot later on. Well, let's skip iTunes and just go for this straight update. No one re ever reads these licenses, so let's just agree and wait until it downloads. Then let's take it from there. I get FT2 restarts. I will confirm the update installed fine. I already switched the computer off and reinstalled the cards back. So speak to in a bit. Now I'm gonna take note of the model of SSDs in each card and in what slot I put them. I'm gonna use that for partitioning. Since I don't know exactly whether I'm gonna keep both cards or not, I will partition them separately now, not do a four times SSD RAID, or maybe just some benchmarks, but separately partition them so then I can remove one of them without losing data if required to sell the cards. And then I can even keep the SSD for my servers or sell them all together. Let's see.